Taurus, welcome. It's the end of October. Heart spread. This uh, always on Monday, by the way. So, uh, Aries in Taurus. I also do the singles on Mondays as well. Aries and Taurus. And basically, if you don't have anyone on your mind, this is going to read who's on your mind, who's in your heart. Um, and the singles reads a completely different kind of reading, um, where it just is focused solely on your soulmate. But this one's an interactive reading. We'll look at you and your person. Kind of look first, seventh house here. And um, just going out on the 18th here, just for the full moon in Aries. That's going to be a positive one, I hope, for most of us. Some stuff starting to shake in worldwide, though, uh, in the collective, I notice. Good old October. October surprise. All right, so if, uh, if you're interested, there's a, over the weekend I did all signs. So uh, look at your Taurus, if uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, if you want. But all 12 signs, uh, Mercury retrograde read. It reads the one that's uh, on your mind that you can't get off your mind. Maybe the one that got away. You could be married, happily married, single. That doesn't matter. It's just uh, maybe there's someone you kind of stuck in your craw there. And I just think that's going to uh, have some meaning and significance uh, to look at. So that's what that's about. Um, and do join the Soul Family Read. That's up for the day. That's just collectively, whoever resonates, I sort of uh, read myself into it and try to keep it short. It's a more spiritual read, guys. This, Taurus, is who's in your heart. And let's do this. Let's do this. Taurus, Taurus, Six of Pentacles, that's a good Taurus card. Um, so in terms of love and relationship, this is where your mind and heart is at right now. And um, I really like it because I read this kind of a, a little bit of a baseline where you're at, like not necessarily in relation to your person, just where you're at. Um, but usually when you're in this, I get this feeling that you, you weren't born this way, Six of Pentacles. Uh, you like you've had uh, relationships that weren't reciprocal you know what they look like you know what they smell like and so you're in a place in yourself where it comes to relationships where you ain't playing you know um, and you'll know like probably very quickly uh, if the given energy is reciprocal or not and this is very solid with pinnacles so um, you know um, also comes to mind someone who is not settling. This is a Taurus, it's like, I'm not settling here. This person's gonna have to weigh up. They're gonna have to weigh up. They have to measure up exactly to the right amount for me. If they're a little, if they're a little light, a little light on it, and they don't come up, mm -mm. Taurus is like, mm-mm, I ain't playing. Well, who's gonna level up, King of Cups? Well, here's the thing, like manifestation. So you're in this very solid energy. The universe is going like you're, you're weighing things out. Um, you ain't playing. You you know, you're only taking this very solid energy that weighs up to what you want. And maybe King Cups does. This is one you're thinking of here. So could be a water sign, sure. Um, Cancer, Scorpio. Pisces person, got the seahorses there, got Neptune around them, could be someone that's romantic, man or woman, they're particularly romantic, just kind of look at how glowing that is, kind of the words come into mind, a romantic devil, if you're old enough to remember the, that phrase, it used to be used, you romantic devil you, uh-huh, and uh, He's not the Jim Morrison King of Cups, you know, from the uh, Ethereal Visions deck. But he's looking pretty cool here. Interesting. So let's see what now. Hello. <laughs> this is how you're reacting to this person, though. The tower. The way you, the way to read this, this is how you're reacting to the energy of your person once you engage them in a relationship. Well, the Six of Pentacles, I try to detach. 
This is just your energy right now where you're at. Now you're engaging with this King of Cups energy and you have, you're experiencing the tower. Well, let's see what's going on with them. All right, kind of, you do have the five of wands on the bottom of the deck, so overall conflict. Wow. <laughs> okay, we'll look here now. The way they're reacting to you, how they're experiencing you, they go from the King of Cups to death, which is uh, a lot better leap, actually. For a King of Cups, could be a Scorpio. It might be normal for them. I'm Venus and Scorpio. Kind of normal for us to transform when it comes to our person. Uh, but for you, clearly, it is just something coming down. It crashes like something down in your world here. And both major arcana. And when I see death in the tower, I got to think of fair, guys. Like this brought down a marriage, brought down, uh, could be been like a workplace controversy. Like this is a... The Scorpio energy that meets the tower. Um, maybe your person here, you discovered that they're seriously a player and you're like seriously in a harem and that was enough to bring bring down the tower. Would for me, I mean, you're coming in, even Steven, what's going on? This is what I'm offering. And this person would come in, uh, be like literally like a Don Juan um, and you find out that they have... Uh, a whole harem of people uh, in their sexual life. Um, otherwise, like I say, um, could just be a powerful sexual attraction that draws you together. And um, it, it almost feels more to me here than in that case, uh, Taurus, it would have brought down your marriage here. So you may have been in a solid, maybe this represents you were in a solid relationship where everything was okay problem with that Taurus, not to make fun of Tauruses, but the thing about Taurus being fixed earth is actually you also have other placements, maybe fire placements, and it can get kind of boring, or you know, you just, uh, you get a little jaded, and it happens in relationships, and you sort of let it go, and then this, you know, Scorpio devil possibly over here, comes along and you know it's, uh, you're opposite so that's kind of irresistible um, and something happens and this brings down this very uh, solid you thought re like relationship thing about it is if it comes down it wasn't really solid and not to make excuses for fooling around because I'm not but have to consider too when someone starts looking around why I mean the real issue is why like what's going on in the relationship. And so the main thing is to turn around and talk to your partner. That's of course the last thing. You know, I'm kind of thinking like, oh, there's something strange, honey. That's not the conversation most of us want to have. Um, but you know, that uh, clearly wasn't done here. And my guess is um, this might've happened kind of fast, uh, out of your control, tower and death, tower and death. I mean, really strong. If you look at sinistry and stuff, there's going to be this Pluto, Mars, Uranus, Venus stuff that's sticky, icky, good. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, I get it, man. I get it. Venus and Scorpio. Sometimes, you know, you really have to look at it to see. You'll see. Not to make excuses, but usually when this happens, there's something really strong. And you feel it like uh, viscerally. Uh, very uh, immediately. Yeah, guys. Wow. Ace of Cups. Vice from Spirit. Now, this is important because uh, the placement of this is to give advice from Spirit to you in regards to the relationship with this person you're thinking of. Okay, so Spirit wants to give you the best advice possible in regards to this person. Guys, I gotta say that it's saying to give your cup of love to this person. I mean, I could go on and say, well, it's under the tower, you rebuild with self-love, and it's like, no, I think it's saying, give your, consider giving your cup of love to this person, you know? Maybe the tower came down for a reason. This person needed to go through death and transformation. 
that can also be death and transformation um, starts a new cycle tower comes down you start a new cycle you got to rebuild the tower now the two of swords for them so this person too the two of swords coming under the death card is not good we we'll look at how similar those energies are how the colors are how well they match and st and and she's blindfolded I think this is like I'm feeling this really strong your person it's I'm a little confused and I have to clarify this because I don't know why spirit would tell you to give your cup of love to this person because they're literally lost lost they are in the throes of transformation so typically when someone's in the throes of transformation I mean you want to like back off and you know because this is a powerful real transformation here to go from a king of cups and transform where are you going with that going to be the hair font there I mean that's like ascension stuff uh, salute me more well Yeah, heavy Taurus. So this could be a ta-da soulmate relationship contract, and you were meant to hold space for them emotionally, maybe romantically, in love, because it's in that position. And I know, man, I don't know some people. Oh, it's codependent. I don't write the contracts. It's how it works. Things balance out. It's not like a dead exactly. It's not any kind of punishment. It's just you guys must have to balance something out. And for a minute, I mean, you're just going to love them unconditionally while they freaking finish transforming. Because they're in the midst of it. But it's like you can't put your hands in there too hard just yet. It'd be like if you took the cake out of the oven too soon and it'd be a fucking mess. You got to let it finish baking. And then you take it out, and it's yummy. I think you understand what I'm talking about. The advice from spirit. Look, you got the Ace of Cups and then the Ace of Pentacles. Okay. You may be called upon here, Taurus, Six of Pentacles. Think you're in a much better position than this person. In the aftermath of this disaster, we'll call it, from the tower, and however that played out, I mean, you know, Tower comes for a reason. Uranus transits break up things for a reason. And if if it's so you gotta kinda say sometimes, okay, if it happened, had to be for a reason, you know? Um, and so maybe that relationship ended so that this one can begin. That's what I'm saying here in the Nine of Cups. And I like this um, because it implies to me that the support you're gonna give. Um, it's almost not romantic, okay? Uh, it, you're kind of be, at the same time that you're like gonna actually be helping them, uh, maybe physically here with the uh, uh, house and home, whatever, life and limb. Um, emotionally, you're gonna be called upon to demonstrate to them, like energetically, emotionally, what it means to be whole. I mean, you have here emotional and physical, complete wholeness here. And then you have emotional satisfaction. This is being emotionally self-fulfilled. You know, you're not running around when you're in this energy, needing anything to fulfill you, meaning also significantly for your cross watcher, for your person, this King of Cups, that you can be available for them at a time when they might not have a whole lot to give, which is your whole thing to start with. You came into this saying, I ain't playing that anymore where I'm the giver and they're the taker. But now somehow this is different and it reflects like your entire life of the cycle. For me, it's a uh, sun, King Kong, in conjunct the moon for me, uh, which brings this kind of energy, like giving too much, you know? Um, but when it comes to a karmic relationship, I'm gonna tell you, sometimes it's the way it's gonna work. And it's the way it's supposed to work, it's the way it works. And, um, You'll know that because it's not an ongoing thing. 
It's a thing where they recognize what's happening at some level. Even if they're not a spiritual person, you know, they're going to recognize it. And um, they're going to be appreciative here. And so with the outcome of the Nine of Cups, um, it also it takes away, because you might have a sense, well, you know, this is a, a codependent relationship. This is somehow negative. No, this shows being emotionally, you know, self-fulfilled, balanced here. Um, so, you know, your person might have not have been that badly knocked off center. They're just going through a transformation. And it's not unusual for these inner transformations, which is Pluto, it's all inner stuff, to then, particularly towards the end of it, that transit or in the second part of the retro where it's the most powerful be one of the retrograde cycles and you know boom something comes in in the external world something manifests and it's like pretty much can tell it's like about this energy right and for you maybe it was around relationships they've been in unfulfilling relationships with people who didn't give back and you know, um, here it just looks very solid. I see you just genuinely kind of holding uh, space for them, being emotionally mature, giving them. It's it's not so much that they need space. It's just like they're in their pupae, still going through all that, you know. And um, it's just maybe you just understand that you're dealing with something that's literally in the process of change and um, growth. So thank you guys. Let me know what you think of that. I do appreciate the likes, uh, comments are great. It helps the channel. Will help you subscribe. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend, and feel free to share. Thank you.